Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to use an Android phone as a remote monitoring system for your PC. So let's get started. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, you probably didn't know that I like to use a lot of the old tech basically like recycling them and reusing them for different purposes, like an Android as a secondary monitor or even an older Raspberry Pi as a system monitor, which I'll link to those videos right here. But what we'll be doing today is actually taking an older phone and recycling it and using it as a remote system monitor. So now this is a really cool project because not only are you allowed to actually monitor the stuff on your PC, you're actually able to change the attributes like the fan speed or something like that. On top of which, this software also allows you to monitor more PCs than one. So if you have the actual server software installed into multiple computers, you could actually have one dashboard and monitor all of them, which I think is a really cool feature for people who are actually doing mining farms or anything like that, where you have multiple GPUs, multiple PCs spread out, and you wanna be able to have one central location to see what's down, what's hot, etc., etc. Now, the only thing about this software is that it only runs on Windows. Uh, it only runs on Android. If you wanna get the dashboard working, not the control system, but the dashboard itself, you will have to donate about $1, which in my mind, I think is absolutely worth it. It also removes all the ads from the program and everything. So popping over to my desktop. Now this is a Ubuntu 2010 desktop, but I do have my virtual machine running on Windows 10. And if you wanna check out that video, I'll leave a link on the top left. And in here, we are gonna head over to this website called trygonsoft.com. And he does have little previews on how it looks, just like similar to what I just showed you. And all you have to do is just head over to download and download the latest installer. So you see the different versions. So I'm gonna download the 64-bit installer, save over here, and I am gonna run it. There we go. I'm just gonna let it install on its default areas. All right, here we go. So if this is your first time launching the program, you do have to set a password for the database to, uh, for your, all your Android devices to connect to. So set something here, password, and I'm just gonna save this password. Also make note of this certificate because it's gonna ask you quite a few times on your Android for the first time when you're connecting, just to make sure it, it's the same. So I would just remember kind of like the last three digits or something like that and compare it to my Android phone, that's it you're done with this software on installing on your desktop. Now I'm gonna switch over to my Android phone and in the Play Store, the first thing you wanna search for is Remote System Monitor from the same company, Trigon. And once you install it, you could open it up. So the first time you're running it, it'll actually pop in and ask you for the password and everything. But since I aligned everything, uh, I don't have to do that. I am also in the dark mode. That's why you see everything dark and not light. And I'll show you how to switch it between in a second. Now that everything is connected, you can actually see all the stuff on my desktop PC. It's not this computer over here. It's actually my physical desktop machine that yes, I still run Windows on because I play a lot of games on there. And I also use a few Adobe products on there as well. But as you can see, I have all my voltages. I have my AMD Ryzen and you can see the core count and what it's load. If you move down, you can see my memory and also my uh, RTX 3080. You can see the temperatures. Basically, this is where you could actually look at all the attributes. And if you needed to, there are sliders that you could configure. So you see how there's fan control and there's like a lock. I could actually change that and uh, change the attributes for it. You could also check out all the sensors for your hard drives and everything else on this little app. And there's also graphs if you want to keep it up and take a look at what's going on. Now, if you want detail view, it'll actually go down the detail view of that graph. Uh, to switch between the dark mode and the light mode, you got to get out and then go into settings. And then you could actually change it right over here to light or dark mode. Uh, I, I like the dark mode a lot better because I'm actually putting this phone into my computer. Well, not this, this physical phone, but one of my older phones. Let me switch back over to the dark mode. And... If I was to go over to the dashboard, this option is actually locked and you have to donate the $1 that I was talking about to unlock this mode. To make a new dashboard, you hit the little plus button on the bottom right. We'll call this test and items per row, four or more, it's all up to you. You could do four. I would actually do more. So I did eight because you can always resize it. And I'm gonna hit save, hit okay. And from here, you add your server, desktop, Okay, so now I can add a widget and I'm gonna add a gauge 
uh, hit the little plus button, select sensor, and this will have the list of your computer. So if you have more than one computer, it'll list it down here. So let's see, I wanna gauge for my total CPU. And now when I'm done, I could change the colors. It'll name it for me, or if I wanna change the name. And close, and that is my total CPU percentage. Now, you, like I said, it's small right now, but what you could do is go to Arrange Widgets and increase the size of how big you want the graph to be. And you could do this for many other options. If you want the graph to have multiple circles, you could do that as well. So let me see, if I were to press and hold, I could add a second sensor inside that sensor, and I'll say memory, and I'll do used. Used percentage of RAM, back, close. Now I have two bubbles in there, and you could keep adding. It took me like about a good hour to play around and get it the way I wanted to. So I'm gonna show you how my demo is right now. And, and this is what it looks like for the setup that I got going, which is all eight cores on top. I got my CPU usage. The right side is my RAM usage. Uh, the, in the middle, I have the network speed up and down. Then I have the temperatures for my CPU and my GPU, as well as the RPMs for my GPU and my CPU. And then I have my temperatures all for my four hard drives I have in the computer. And then the GPU usage on the bottom left, and then the RAM usage for the GPU. So it kind of like gives me a graph, and if I stick this into my computer, it will actually look pretty good. And if I have a tablet, I actually could set it up just to display more information for other computers as well. If you use one of these USB connectors that you pop into your motherboard, you could definitely power an older phone with the motherboard power and kind of hide it somewhere inside. This way you don't see it. But ultimately, I think this is a really cool idea. It's a really cool thing that you can do to your computer. And it's a really good sensor panel, especially for older phones. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this type of content, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also, hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.